So, quite a long time ago, I was with this lovely girl for a couple of years. At least I thought she was lovely at the time. I later found out that I was just an oblivious leader in a whole themed conga line considering the amount of men she's seen behind my back. But hey, at least I was at the front, right? <laughs> Ow. But rather than having to reference her this entire video, I'm just going to make a slight tweak to this script. <laughs> So I had been dating Margot Robbie for about a year at this stage, when she started making jabbing remarks about how I've never taken her any place expensive, and despite my best protests, Tesco doesn't count. No, she wanted to be taken to some sort of fancy restaurant. Now, Ducky and fancy restaurants go together like a paraplegic on a bouncy <laughs> castle. My family hadn't a lot of money when we were growing up, so I didn't actually frequent a lot of expensive places outside of the odd trip to the petrol station, so the idea of a fancy restaurant was a little bit bizarre to me. Oh, it was a lovely little restaurant, and the bill only came to 54 euro. 54 euro? Do you have have any idea how many Big Mac meals that could get you? You would live like a king. But Margot Robbie, like many other girlfriends, had an ability to turn anything into a jab, no matter how unrelated it might be. Hey, if you need me, I'm upstairs playing Halo. Oh yeah, you'll take out the Covenant, but you won't take me out. What? No, I I'm not feeding them, I'm shooting them. And I suppose you'll be bringing along that bitch Cortana too, won't you? Well, I hardly have a choice in that. It's how the game is pro- Oh, final book is a place. So that Friday, myself and Margot Robbie arrived at the Ponciest restaurant in town called La Cotton Expensive, and I was immediately in over my head. I had asked when I called to book it, but unfortunately they said a poor man's guide to fine dining wasn't a thing. So I walked in there like it was my first day at a new school, not knowing how to approach anything. Thankfully, Margot Robbie wasn't a stranger to this kind of thing, so she took the lead in dealing with the host about the booking, and I hung back like a shy child despite the reservation being in my name. Table for two for a Mr. Ducky. Of course, right this way. Oh, sorry, it's his first time here. Of course, that's no problem. I have a lollipop here for any big brave men who want to come over here. Oh, are you a big brave man? Yeah. Oh, of course you are. So we took our seats and were handed our menu, and things immediately kicked off in confusion when the waitress asked me if I'd like a pair of teeth. Obviously, I mustn't have heard her right, so I said, sorry? And she said, would you like a pair of teeth? At least that's what it sounded like to me, because I didn't have anything in my vocab that even came close to sounding like it. So I was like, uh, no thanks, I usually bring my own. Then Margot Robbie cuts across me with a smile and asks if she can get a half a bottle of wine and a coke. The waitress wanders off to get the drinks and Margot Robbie takes off laughing at me. <laughs> A paratif, you fool. It's French. It means a drink. Would you not think somebody offering you a pair of teeth in a restaurant is a bit weird? Well, I don't know what shit rich people would be doing behind closed doors. Besides, she's speaking French to an Irishman. Why am I the weirdo? So while the waitress was getting our drinks, we take a look at the menu. And as luck would have it, the whole f***ing thing is in French. So I have to spend the next 10 minutes looking for translations off her. Okay, la entrees. Entrees. It means starters. Okay, uh, frites? Frites. It means chips. Oh my god, they sell poison. What? Where? Here. Poisson, you idiot. It means fish. Fish? Ugh. I'd sooner have the poison. I actually did French for two years in school and picked up the odd word here and there throughout my life, but none of it ever really stuck outside a couple of questionable sentences. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Ducky. Habite un omelette du fromage. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to decipher this Da Vinci code of a menu, because in like most restaurants, the waitress thinks 45 seconds is more than enough time for you to figure out what your order is. Which is strange, because in my experience, women normally hate it when you're done in under a minute, whether or not you speak French. <laughs> Froggy style. <laughs> Aww. Well, joke's on you, YouTube, because I got some deadly merch to shill. For those of you out there who pray to the Book of Man Code and cherish the companionship of a good group of lads, then the me and the lads design is the one for you. Or maybe you're a softer soul like myself, and you'd like the world to know what's important to you in a more subtle way. Then look no further than beer, banter, and box. So if you want to support the channel, and look good doing it. Then you can find the link to the merch shop in the description. I also added my new and improved Discord server for all Patreon supporters, so if you want access to that, along with early access to all my videos, censor and ad free, you need only spend a quid. So for starters, I end up going for the soup of the day, which is unfortunately broccoli and cauliflower, which I do not understand. What chef walks into a kitchen and thinks, what would make a delicious soup? Hmm, I know. Those barely edible flowery cabbage things that people are forced to eat when they're on a diet. I mean, who wouldn't pay a top dollar for off-green sludge tailor-made to give you bowel movements with so much thrust they're measured in newtons? But my only other options were something with blue cheese or something with prawns. And you can call me a weirdo, but I'd drink vegetables before I'd eat flatulence or chow down on a glass of slimy sea maggots. For the main, I went with steak, as it was the only thing out of the mains I actually recognised outside of duck, but I'm not a cannibal. And for dessert, I wasn't sure, so I ordered this variety platter thing that had three different 
some desserts on the plate. Margot Robbie ordered whatever she wanted. I can't really remember exactly what she ordered, but she got some chocolate thing for dessert, which I'll come back to. Now, this is where the waitress turned to me and asked, How would you like your steak? Now, to be honest, I was completely unprepared for this question. Most of you watching, I'm sure, know well. She's asking if I'd like it rare, medium, well done, etc. But this was the very first time I was ever asked this, and I never really had steak before, much less ordered it in a restaurant. And I don't know why, but an episode of Mr. Bean popped into my head. It was an episode where he orders steak tartare, and it turns out he accidentally ordered what essentially is raw beef. And not wanting to make the same mistake upon hearing how I like my steak, I answered, uh, cooked? If eyes were bullets, Margot Robbie would be shitting shell casings. Because with the look she threw me, I knew immediately that cooked wasn't one of the options. The waitress just smirked at me and said, And how cooked would you like it? All the way through? To which she said, well done, so I assume it was the right answer. Over the next, quite frankly, ridiculous 30 minutes, we waited for our starter. Not that we were lonely, mind you, with the waitress checking on us every five minutes like you would if you just found out your babysitter was a YouTuber. I'm sure the wait and the constant pestering had nothing to do with making sure I had to order a second Coke that comes conveniently in a smooth glass bottle so it doesn't hurt you as much when they shaft you in a hole for the f***ing price of them. I'll be honest, by the sixth time, it had started to wear on me. Are you sure I can't get you guys anything? Yeah, I was about some f***ing food. Thankfully, a few minutes later, we finally got got her starters. She got a lovely plate of whatever the chef found in the envy's rake after doing some gardening, and I got what you could only describe as a bowl of Shrek's money shot. It looked about as appetising as you'd expect a liquefied blend of the world's two most disgusting common vegetables would look. But I was starving at this point, so I'd just have to take a leaf out of the missus's book and just shove it in my mouth, swallow, and pretend to love it while I internally try not to gag. So I take my first spoonful, and immediately I begin to weep. Because it was the best f***ing soup I had ever eaten in my entire life. The chef somehow made it absolutely delicious. Needless to say, I licked that bowl like I was box noshing Natalie Dormer. That's when I thought to myself, maybe I'm wrong about fancy restaurants. Maybe it isn't just overpriced toss served by people wearing an expression like you just in their pocket. Maybe there's actually something to this. Well, my optimism was as well placed as a barber in a cancer ward because on arrived our mains and I had to do a double take because I had ordered a steak, the most expensive main they had, and they handed me a child's portion. Seriously, for the price I was expecting a big fuck off red Flintstone slab of meat. But what I got, you could lose down the side of a couch if you sat down too quickly. I mean, sure, it looked very nice with the sauce decor and a couple of unknown leaves on top to make it look more leafy. But I am hungry, and the last time I checked, Instagram likes weren't very filling. And this steak was about the size of a rice cake. Well, needless to say, this meal was a bit of a mixed bag so far. The only thing left that could possibly save this evening was dessert. So, fast forward to desserts. Margot Robbie gets hers first, and it's this absolutely mouth-watering slice of warm, melty chocolate cake. I mean, it looks delicious. Chocolate so thick, heavy, and dense, it looks like they just cut a chunk out of Wesley Snipes and served it up on a plate. So, needless to say, I was excited to get my variety plate of sickeningly sweet diabetes and I didn't have long to wait because a plate was put down right in front of me. I looked down and there it was. A plate with three of the smallest pieces of dessert I had ever seen in my entire life. There was like a square of cheesecake, a square of chocolate brownie and a square of some other lemon curd thing. None of which were bigger than an inch and a half wide and tall. I was duped again. Genuinely, when we finished the entire meal, I was still hungry. And this was before I entered the fat stage of my life, so I can't even blame that. So with me badly craving a burger, we decided to bring the night to a close and ask for the bill, which I didn't know there was rules around. You're supposed to do it very hush-hush, like it's a big embarrassing secret. Excuse me? Yes, sir. Can we get the bill, please? The bill? Of course. Shh! Keep it down or we'll be the laughing stock at the village for f**k's sake. I'm sorry I ever asked for that bill, though. I had expected it to be somewhat expensive. Three course meal for two. I was thinking 60 to 80 quid. Bit pricey considering I was in a minimum wage retail job at the time and it was my treat. But I also knew that this wasn't KFC, so I was prepared. Or so I thought. Did you ever receive a bill so shocking and frightening you tried to blink it into being cheaper? The total came to 134 euro. Yeah, I nearly vomited up a lung with the shock. 4 euro for a coke. 13 euro for those sample sized desserts. Hang on. You charged me for the f***ing lollipop! I just about had enough money to cover it, but Ducky wasn't getting no burger tonight anymore. Had to leave a tip for the waitress too, which I really don't get. It's a bit like, there you go, and here's a little something for carrying the food 15 feet. And you can tell that guy in the kitchen who spent years in culinary school learning how to make those delicious dishes, he can go f*** himself.